To describe Alex Gibney as prolific is an understatement. He's made 14 documentaries in just five years, exploring what one reporter calls the porous boundaries between good and bad. His subjects range from Enron. It had taken Enron 16 years to go from about 10 billion of assets to 65 billion of assets, and it took him 24 days to go bankrupt. To the fall of former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer. My view is I brought myself down, and I will not try to blame others or excuse my behavior. I did what I did, and, and shame on me. Now in his crosshairs, Steve Jobs. Do you think early on that Steve could be the guy? Oh, definitely. You just had to spend a few minutes with him and you knew it. He had the ability to talk about the possibility of what this computer could be. When the Apple CEO died in 2011, Gibney says he was intrigued by the outpouring of grief over Jobs' death. And that led to Steve Jobs, the man in the machine. Yeah, I was uh, haunted by a question, which was, when he died, why was it that so many people who didn't know him wept all over the world? He was the CEO of the world's most valuable corporation. And when CEOs of big corporations die, you don't usually see people around the world lighting candles to them. <laughs> I looked at a guy who started out very much as a renegade, wanting to stick it to the man, and ended up becoming the man himself. Which has come to define your, your target area. You stick it to a man. Mm. What did Steve Jobs do to get on your list? Well, <laughs> I, I didn't set out to stick it to Steve Jobs. We could sort of influence the world. But the documentary is an unvarnished portrait of a visionary who by all accounts was a fiercely competitive businessman. It becomes very Godfather-esque. You know, you're part of my family, and Apple's my family, and you don't want to leave my family. And at the end, he says, if you choose to leave my family, uh, should you decide to take so much as one member of my family away from me, I will personally take you down. After all, this is a man who for years denied the paternity of his eldest daughter. She got pregnant, and Steve just was not not, not me, it's not me, it's not me, right? Even though that was not a, a, a reasonable thing to say. And yet, Steve Jobs is the man who brought us all things I, from the iPod to the iPad and the iPhone. I think his great contribution in a positive sense was introducing us to these machines and saying, they're not distant tools, they can be an extension of yourself. The 61-year-old Gibney says he prefers his characters and stories more gray than black and white. You know, it's interesting. I think about this, and it's like living a lie. I didn't live uh, a lot of lies, but I lived one big one. You know, it's different. You were rolling on one film, and then suddenly, yes. what happened? We had a film that was a kind of heroic comeback story. Lance Armstrong comes back after many years and as an old man kicks the butt of all the young kids and shows us all what, what Will can do. I like to win, but more than anything, I, I can't stand the idea of losing because to me that he was dead. And look at this, Armstrong accelerating once again. That film was ready, it was mixed, and then a funny thing happened. Whoops. I lied. I lied. Not only did I lie, but I lied the biggest lie you could possibly imagine. It wasn't just a little bit of dope here and there. I ran a doping program that was there from the start. And, and, and even worse, he was the hero to all these cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. And to find out that actually he was trafficking on their hope and their pain in a way to ennoble himself, that was the, that was the real crime. So this is Jigsaw. Jigsaw. Jigsaw is the name of his production company. So I am a, kind of a puzzle freak. Gibney is so the son is of a the journalist one. who he says had a deep-seated distrust of authority. You know, they say to succeed, you're supposed to suck up and kick down. Well, he was the classic guy who sucked down and kicked up, which was never a good career path. He was at time 
He was at Time, then fired, at Newsweek, fired, at Life, fired. Still, Frank Gibney seems to have been a big influence on his son, along with Gibney's stepfather, theologian William Sloan Coffin. There was something about my father, my mother, and then my stepfather. I think they all ruddered against authority in, in, in their own peculiar ways, and, and that probably rubbed off on me too. Alex Gibney won an Oscar in 2008 for Taxi to the Dark Side, an unflinching look at America's use of torture in the post 9-11 world. When the second one died a week later, that's when it was like, oh crap, something's gonna happen now. You know, it's two prisoners dying within a week of each other. That's bad. His film about the Catholic Church's handling of child sexual abuse earned him two Emmy Awards. Before ordination, I had no idea that we had treatment centers around the world for priests to go to when they sexually molested, raped, and sodomized kids. Earlier this year, he turned his focus on the religion of Tom Cruise and John Travolta in HBO's Going Clear, Scientology and the Prison of Belief. To understand Scientology, you have to understand the life and mind of its inventor, L. Ron Hubbard. Gibney often narrates his own work, putting himself in the line of fire. The Church of Scientology took out a full-page newspaper ad denouncing him and his film. How have you been described? Cool customer. It's kind of fearless. I mean, you are unafraid to be, take on bullies who have a reputation for undermining their critics. You're not afraid of that? You'd be crazy not to be a little bit afraid of that. But if you're too afraid, you're frozen. And that's how the bullies win. Uh, if you don't stand up, they get away with murder. From his office with its view of Manhattan, Alex Gibney is a man on a mission. Bullies make me angry. They make you so angry, I think your face got a little bit red when you said bullies make me angry. Yeah, that may be so. That's one of the reasons, I mean, in terms of the Scientology film, that's a film about bullies, how, how, how innocent people who want to better their lives are basically manipulated and bullied by a few people uh, in, in, in rather brutal ways. So that's what, that's what gets me motivated. That's what gets me up in the morning. Last week, Going Clear won three Emmy Awards, among them the Emmy for Outstanding Documentary.